Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack 1 pick 1, a rare, Dalakos Crafter of Wonders, not a particularly exciting rare for a draft. We've got some decent uncommons, the Manticore's quite good, especially in the blue-red decks, but even outside of it has some nice synergy in the red-green 4 Power Matters archetype. We've got the Horn Beetle, which shines in the red-green archetype, but good in pretty much any green deck, as you'll end up with a couple 4 Powered Creatures. Turn 2 Horn Beetle, turn 3 Chimera is kind of the dream start. And then at common, the best card by far is the Final Death. So, I've got an interesting pack. I think it's pretty much Horn Beetle versus Final Death for me. I will try the Beetle for now. Not an exciting pack. Couple good white cards and Chimera. Commanding Presence can be good. No real green cards. There's an Omen of the Forge in red. Eh, I'll take the Omen of the Forge for now. And see where we end up. Well, now I'm probably forced to take this Elspeth's Nightmare third pick. It's enough better than the Warbriar Blessing that I'm willing to take it. Alright, fourth pick Renata. That's definitely a signal that green is uh, pretty open, so take Renata. And maybe we'll end up blank green after all. Mogus's Favor is a card I don't mind. Nothing else super exciting in this pack anyway. That's a lot of cling to dusts. So now I could take a relentless pursuit if we're gonna end up in the black green escape deck. Pursuit's not bad. Uh, I don't mind an aspect. Omen of the Dead is okay. And there's always cling to dust if we don't end up with more escape cards. Yeah, I'll take a pursuit. I think it's close with Omen of the Dead. I think I would take both over aspect at the moment. There's still a war leader I could take in case somehow black doesn't pan out. Would be a four powered creature for the horn beetle. Or I could take a fairy cast libation for black. Probably still take the black card here. It's a pretty late Sun Main Pegasus, another card that the bots don't really respect. Usually not a huge fan of the enemy of enlightenment, but maybe. I'll need to take it out of necessity, because of course the more pursuits we take, the weaker they get. They do have diminishing returns. Alright, pretty happy with either Lampad or Grove Dancer. Which one do we want more? At this point I would say we're slightly more committed to green than we are black, and the Grove Dancer has good synergy with escape, generally speaking, so I think I'm leaning Grove Dancer. Might play this cling to dust, you never know. Wings is also a card that can be playable in black green. Alright, so heading into the second pack, don't have much removal. But, uh, you know, got some okay individual cards here. The Beetle, Renata, Elspeth's Nightmare. And now we have to decide between a second beetle or a Warbriar Blessing. There's also Nassian Wanderer. We will need to increase our four power creature counts if we take the second beetle. If we wield the Marauder, I might play it as well. Alright, second Renata's not bad. That can easily end up as a four powered creature for the beetle. Don't mind Eidolon when we have a Mogus' favor already. But of course, it would be much better if we had a. Mars Grasp in the deck, and then there's a Harrowfant, which I also like in Blank Green quite a bit. Although we're not too heavy on escape cards, just have the Favor and the Cling to Dust at the moment. So probably still give it to Renata. Alright, maybe we pivot. Warden of the Chains would be quite strong with Double Beetle. Arrows' Blessing in the pack too, or I could just take the Huntmaster. So this is a tough one. In black, the only card I'm like real excited about is the Elspeth's Nightmare. Mogus's favor to a lesser extent. 
could just take the Huntmaster and keep my options open instead of trying to pivot. I mean, we do have an amulet, I could technically splash a card or two as well. Although, you know, Warden, while it is splashable, is still better played on curve. Yeah, it is true that Favor does help with Beetle getting up to 4 power, or getting a creature up to 4 power. So that's still a good combo. Can take the Huntmaster, which would fit fine into just a black green deck as well. Could take the Blessing with the idea of potentially splashing it. Could take the Warden, which to me says more that we're trying to pivot into red green as opposed to splashing it. Although it could technically also be splashed. I agree that the Warden might not be enough better than the Huntmaster that we want to completely pivot because of it, but the Warden here maybe implies that red-green as a color combination might be open, so we might get rewarded for pivoting. So we're not only evaluating the current pick, but also the implications of the current pick. I'll probably go with the Huntmaster, even though I do have two Renatas, so it's not like we're lacking four drops, but I guess one Huntmaster can't hurt. And we'll see where we end up here. Both paths would have uh, worked out just fine if we pivoted into red. Could have taken a blessing, but a second nightmare is great too, so can't complain. And probably take the carotid now, since we could use some more good two drops. So it doesn't seem like we're gonna be red after all here. But, uh, Carotid sets up a turn 3 Renata, which is quite strong. Don't think this is a Hydra's Growth deck necessarily. Wow, Chimera's awesome with double Horn Beetle, so very happy to have that. This pack dried up a little bit. Doubt I'm playing two Soul Reapers, but you never know. So yeah, red does seem open in this direction. Although the Maze Warden is another card that is heavily undervalued by the bots. Aspect may or may not make the cut here. Eh, who knows, maybe we'll play Marauder if we're in need of more four-powered creatures. Moss Viper is not particularly exciting. There's a Dream Shaper Shaman, I do have an amulet, I could splash it. But I don't think I'm too excited to do that here. More Marauders. And more Dream Shaper Shamans. Uh, I mean, I'm not playing two Marauders. When we have two Renatas and a Huntmaster already. I guess we also have Carrioted for fixing. Maybe if I get a bunch of uh, Satessan trainings. Who knows. Don't really want unknown shores. Not gonna need a third Soul Reaper, I guess. Alright. So heading into the last pack, could use maybe a couple more removal spells, since at the moment we're relying just on these Elspeth's Nightmares. But uh, overall, our deck's like looking pretty reasonable. Maybe one or two extra finishers could help too. Yeah, there's a Warbriar Blessing, I guess. If we were red, then Arosa's Blessing and Celebrant could have been options too. Funeral Rites, not looking amazing since we're a bit light on escape creatures, but I'll take a Warbriar Blessing. Forerunner seems playable. Plays well with double Renata. I'll take a Lyre, although, hmm. This one's actually close, entrancing Lyre vs. Final Death. Maybe we can use a Lamp Pad as a finisher. Triple Elspeth's Nightmare, I mean. It's also a card that we don't necessarily want to draw a million copies of, but drawing one is very good. But I don't think we're splashing for Warden of the Chains. Don't think I'm playing Moss Viper. 
Colossus would be like fine with a Forerunner, but we only have one Forerunner. I think we have enough two drops that I don't need Piper. I mean, I probably still take the Nightmare. I am a fan of Inevitable Ends. Probably take the Omen now. This might be a deck that needs a Gift of Strength to get through. Don't think I'm gonna miss Harpy. Would have liked another Anilia's Forerunner here as a curve topper. I guess I could play Enemy, or although we already have one, and I doubt we're playing two. But the first enemy could make the cuts. So how many escape guards do I have? Not that many. We have Chimera. Mogus' favor, cling to dust, that's it. So I don't know how good this relentless pursuit is gonna end up being. Usually prefer funeral rites over it. One libation seems fine. Uh, Marauder could be cuttable, but uh, does help with the beetles. Uh, Wings of Hubris could be a way for us to close out the game, although I'm a bit worried that will be lined on creatures for the wings. Yeah, we're currently at 13, and the only cards I'm like excited to pair with the wings are. Chimera and uh, Forerunner to a lesser extent, but we are weak to flyers. Could play the amulet just to add one more card to the graveyard and as a potential mana fixer, but we already have a lot of two drops, so sacking the amulet on turn two, and we also have a lot of threes, so I'm not gonna get to activate this until like turn four, turn five. So it seems like a bigger drawback than an advantage for me. I don't think I'm going to splash. I only have like two pieces of mana fixing that I'm like happy to play. Unknown Shores would make the Shaman cost 7 mana if it's my only source, so it doesn't seem great. Don't know about the Gift of Strength. Cling to Dust is probably the first escape card that I would cut, but it's still playable. The Wings is a maybe. Marauder is a maybe, and enemies is a maybe. I think everything else is okay. Is this a 16 lander or 17 lander? I mean, our curve isn't insanely high. Yeah, Libation, I guess, would be the next card I'm thinking of cutting. What's our removal situation like? We've got a Blessing, Triple Nightmare, Inevitable Ends, Liar, and then Libation would be the last one. It's not crazy to want to cut a Nightmare, since it does have some diminishing returns as well, but I think it's enough powerful that I don't mind drawing the second copy, even if the second copy is going to be less effective than the first. Carrot it still seems quite good here, since playing a Renata turn sooner is uh, quite strong. I think I'm okay cutting the Gift of Strength and the Marauder. That way... I have to play fewer swamps, and then maybe I can get away with 16 lands, since we also have a Karyatid. And then the last cuts, maybe the Kling, although Kling being a cantrip can also help with playing fewer lands to an extent. But I guess I'm not gonna escape this all that much. And we'll keep the wings, even though our creature count's a bit light, just as a way to potentially help close the game. I mean, Funeral Rites is still okay. I have a Mogus' Favor, an Omen that cares about cards in the graveyard. And I have a, a Loadsome Chimera, so we still have a bit of escape. And then the distribution. Pretty even. We do need double green for Renata, but we seem to have a few extra black spells overall. So 8 and 8 seems fine. Alright, not an exciting black green deck. We'll see how this plays out. Hopefully. Elspeth's Nightmare just wins some games by itself.
Alright, they did not find a creature or enchantment, important to point out. So we've got five mana here, but I guess Renata is good enough. We've got Omen of the Dead at the ready. And yeah, no zombies from Timurat Calls the Dead. Still limited to one spell here. And don't really want to trade when they have a full graveyard with escape when we have Liar that can tap this down maybe in the future. But I do want to play creatures now that we have Renata out to take advantage. Don't want an aspect of Lamprey quite yet. They have a few too many cards in hand still. So I could go Soul Reaper plus Liar or Soul Reaper keep up three mana for an activation. Think I'm gonna play this slow and just keep up three mana. This doesn't feel like a game where we're just gonna out aggro the opponents. It's going to be a pretty grindy affair. So every bit of card advantage could matter. If they have their own aspect of Lamprey, I'm not sure what I would keep. Could also sacrifice a creature in response to draw an extra card. Probably take it for now. This could be a decent turn. Nightmare. Get rid of the lamp hand, play beetle. And I still have Omen at the ready. And I'm fine to trades. I'm probably okay casting Omen on Renata end of turn. Perfect, we get to empty their hands. Just do a double check to see if we can kill them with the Warbriar Blessing that we just picked up. Five, so if I fight a beetle on the Chimera, they have one blocker left, attack with all, and they should be dead. Yeah, their Timurit calls the dead. I didn't reveal any creatures or enchantments, so it was pretty underwhelming for them. Alright, this seems fine, but we do need to draw. 
couple lands. Could Mogus' favor on the second beetle to get the first one up to 4 power, so they can eventually start growing each other. We would be hitting for a lot. So I can grow the original beetle to it for four and grow the second one. Probably makes more sense than the other way around. Just a Huntmaster for now. Alright, we're just gonna keep growing these beetles until they get large enough that they can attack. This turn I don't think we want to send every anyone since they would just trade. But a 6-6 six, six Horn Beetle could maybe Get a good attack in next turn, we'll see. Hierophant's good here, on the splash it looks like, or maybe they're splashing the blue. Alright, never mind, they're splashing all the colors. So I'm kind of scared, because if our opponent gets to the late game, presumably their card quality is going to be pretty high if they're in four colors. So I probably need to force a trade for this Hierophant and then just Omen to get back Horn Beetle. And trade that for the Hierophant and then can play Renata and end of turn Omen back the Beetle perhaps. Alright, there's a, a reason for the blue splash, most likely. Repeal Renata, it's pretty effective. I think I wait on sending this beetle, but this can attack. And then I could decide to upkeep Sag the Omen too. Yeah, points at 5. Double unknown shores. So they could cast almost anything here. That's yeah, pretty good. Kills my 3 3 beetle. A uh, wings here would be game over. Warbriar Blessing isn't bad. And then Trample would be good too. Alright, so what's the play? I could have the Huntmaster fight the Brawler, but then it could trade off for the Nexus Wardens. Horn Beetle would go up to 8. I mean, if I do that, attack with. A 4-5 Huntmaster with 4 damage and a Horn Beetle. That's an 8-5. 
They could double block here, but that's a fine trade. Or block here, trades, but then they don't have a great block on Beetle. So that seems fine to me. So what happens if I attack with everyone? Let's say this eats this. Trade, chump, take one. Seems okay to me. Yeah, I could wait until next turn for the Forerunner, but I don't want them adding more cards to the board and potentially messing up a good attack. And forcing them to trade off Eutropia when they maybe don't want to is also better. And adding a 5-3 Trampler after we make some trades is still totally fine, I think. Because we know we can make a good attack this turn, we don't know for a fact that we'll be able to make a good attack next turn. Alright, this seems fine. Can escape our favor as well. Plenty of cards in the graveyard. Enemy of Enlightenment, you say. Well, I can escape Mogus' favor on the Grove Dancer and force a trade. Or I can just play four on our pass, make them discard and next turn attack with all, which seems better. They lost a horn beetle. So they need something pretty specific here. Yeah, ideally you want enemy of enlightenment to be the last card in your hand. It's not amazing if you're forced to play it earlier. Well, our deck is weak to flyers, so that could be a long-term issue. Opponent seems to be stuck on two. There's her second color as well. So you could see a removal spell. Revoke. Right, it's especially effective since we can't use Omen to get it back. Don't really want Aspect of Lamprey when they have a million cards in hand. Right, did get a free Mogus' favor at least. So Farika's Libation here, can make them sack a creature. Oh, I guess I can fight with Unmaster itself. Yeah, that's reasonable too. It's probably better here, since I do want to add something else to the board.
All right, and then next turn, we might go for Aspect plus Libation, or maybe Mogus's favor. No need for Omo of the Dead. At the moment, at least. Forerunner is not bad. It's probably a good time to aspect, actually. I think I'll just attack, and then if they want to block, I can Mogus's favor to finish off the Soul Reaper. And if they take it, then I can maybe Libation when they go and enchant the Soul Reaper with the uh, Sentinel's Eyes. Downside of waiting is that they could have picked up another Omen of the Sun. But uh doesn't seem like it. <laughs> uh, this hand could be really good, but it could also be really awkward. All right, so we find our first victim. All right, that one's a little bit too big, sadly. That one's also a little bit too big. That's a strong hand. Timurat is another victim for the Nightmare, it's good to know. Probably take the Grasp since a future Nightmare could get the final death, given that they're stuck on three. And then I'm probably trading for their Chimera with one Beetle and hope they just play Timurit. Could also double block the Charger and then next turn just trade off my other Beetle for Chimera. It's also reasonable since we'll, we will be exiling their graveyard so they will have a hard time escaping cards. They're gonna avoid trading creatures with escape when the third uh, chapter of Nightmare happens. And hope they don't draw a fifth land before the second chapter. <laughs> Looks like uh, they were going to lose their final death. I mean, yeah, Nightmare, just a clean two for one each time. It's pretty hard to beat back to back. They probably have an, a white omen here, so I think I'm better off playing the Soul Reaper than the Chimera.
Alright, Mogus' favor is looking good. And then next turn maybe Aspect if they have two cards left. If they go land into a spell. So enemy is not going to be amazing since my opponent's going to be empty handed. I guess it's not the best combo with Aspect of Lamprey. But it could help us eventually close out the game. Now, Inevitable End is pretty weak against this uh, card specifically, so that could be a bit of an issue. Not sure there if I'm supposed to Aspect or wait a turn. Pretty good. Probably time for Aspects. Sentinel's Eyes and a Lantern, so not, not the best two last cards to have. As they'll be able to escape the Sentinel's Eyes. And yeah, Inevitable End here. This is one of the few scenarios where it's just not a... Not a real card, since they can just keep sacking 1-1s. One Hopefully we can top deck... I don't know what we can draw here that answers this wayfair. I guess Entrancing Liar would be good. Alright, take 6. So play enemy, it's going to be a 3-3 in their turn. Maybe I'm better off like chomping and sacking to the Soul Reaper. Because I'll have to chomp next turn basically. So I might as well get a card out of it. Well, this is going to be a hard game to win. Well, there's a liar, but... Uh Probably too late now. <laughs> Libation. All these cards are super awkward here. Yeah, I think we're out of options. Yeah, once the uh, commanding presence gets out of hand, our deck is pretty soft to it.
A uh, bit of a slow hand, but uh, I guess we're on the play. Alright, this is the tough part, playing around any potential counter spells. I think I just jam Renata. The longer I wait, the weaker it gets. And they might just have a seagull instead here. Probably play Forerunner, and then next turn we can go Huntmaster plus a 2-drop. If I played a Blessing, this would gain 1 Devotion, so it would be enough to fight a Marauder. But long term, the Vexing is probably the bigger issue. Alright, guess I'm ditching a lamp pad and a lance. Blessing second main. They're probably trading for Renata anyway. Against blue black, I probably target uh, Huntmaster still. So there's still one mana short of sacking the Eidolon. down to three and with the giant tramplers the chump and sack eidolon play is not gonna work all right time for the final boss this hand's not exciting no double green no early creatures but we're on the draw got a mogus's favor i guess we'll try it Well, that makes her hand a lot better. Let's have a look. Final Flare and Morphosis. So Final Flare is pretty good against their Inevitable End since they can just on their upkeep sack the creature that has the Inevitable End on it and still get a bit of value. So I think I take Final Flare over Morphosis.
might be able to aspect to get rid of their enchantments. I should probably libation now. Blue Red doesn't play a bunch of auras they are gonna slap on the war leader. Could get punished by counter spells or by uh, a flash creature. And then I'm totally fine if they want to morphose the Grove Dancer. They're probably not going to. And then I might be able to aspect to get rid of it. Huh. <laughs> they had two of those. Fair enough. Well, guess I'll pass. All right, Grove Dancer can probably get busy. Could put the favor on it. Not sure how I feel about that. If I put favor on Renata, it would be big enough to trade off for the War Leader. But I don't really want to trade off for the War Leader. So if I put this on the Grove Dancer, I get one hidden and then the War Leader plays defense essentially. That doesn't seem great for me. I'll just do this for now. And then we'll wait and see where we want to put this Mogus' favor. Ooh, Shimmerwing Chimera, that's a potentially scary card. I guess I can just offer the trade. No real great Mogus' favor targets. Or I could put favor on the Grove Dancer just to entice them into trading, which I don't even know if that's a good thing for me. Can maybe activate Grove Dancer first to see if we mill anything useful. Hmm, that would have been an okay draw, I guess, but nothing amazing. And then I get one more activation on the way out. They might trade for Renata and then keep our leader back, but that buys us more time, and that trade seems fine to me. And then I could favor Renata, or I could wait. Maybe I should have activated the Grove Dancer once more if I wasn't gonna favor Renata. All right, I guess we're racing. And hope to draw some action. <laughs> well, that's awkward. I guess I'll start by attacking. Turtle. Okay. So what I could do now is play second Renata and I'm favor to finish off Turtle. Although then I'll be short on cards in graveyards. No, I should have just enough to favor once more, but I guess I won't be able to do it this turn. Man, this is weird. Finishing off the turtle seems worth it to me. Hmm. 
All right, let's see what we can draw. How do I want to tap my mana? This is probably fine. Well then. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm dead if they draw a creature they can sacrifice. Well, we're not dead yet, that's good. Although, attacking with Renata forces me to... jump with the lamp pad and sack it, which doesn't seem amazing. So I think we just pass. At least now I'm not dead if they top deck a creature, so that's nice. That's a good draw. Right, now Renata can get busy. Uh oh, effect single. It's kind of scary. A removal spell here for a blocker makes things a bit more complicated. Ooh, Shadow Spear. Well, I can just put that on the Vexing Goal, I guess. And then move it to the War Leader. Yeah, that's bad. Horn Beetle. We're still gonna have enough, right? Because if they block Renata, I sack down to seven, we have seven. If they sack Chimera, they're just dead. So yeah, we should still have it. But yeah, definitely a matter of inches. Well, that was close. We were on the brink of death. If they top decked the creature, turn sooner, could have been dead. Let's crack some packs. Sweet. So I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.